Here we are, Southdale, the original modern mall. Welcome, my name is Brandon. Please join me on this tour of Southdale Center in Edina, Minnesota. Oh, who am I kidding? I didn't need to ask you to join me. You are here because you wanted to see Southdale. Before beginning Southdale's history, I wanted to get something out of the way. Southdale is not the first mall in the United States. The first enclosed shopping center was the Westminster Arcade in Providence, Rhode Island, opening in 1828. If we mean modern malls, then we have a few, including Minnesota's own Knollwood Mall, which opened in 1955, but as an outdoor mall. If we increase the criteria to modern enclosed malls, then we still have Valley Fair Shopping Center in Appleton, Wisconsin, and the center of Omaha, Nebraska, beating Southdale Center to the punch by a year, also in 1955. If so many malls opened before 1956, why does Southdale get the credit as the first mall? Size and intent. Southdale was the first fully enclosed, climate-controlled, regional mall. It was designed to be more than just a place to shop. The Dayton family wanted to open a shopping center to accompany their new Dayton store in the up-and-coming Minneapolis suburb of Edina, Minnesota. They were introduced to architect Victor Gruen, who in 1952 showed them plans to build Southdale Center as a suburban utopia. He envisioned a destination where people would drive for daily needs or in which they could even live. He dreamed of a place that offered more than shopping, a post office, public library, or even a spot to spend a couple of hours drinking coffee with friends. With Minnesota's brutal winters, this was a great idea. Imagine the openness of eating outside with a roof two stories above your head to keep out the elements. On October 29, 1954, construction crews broke ground to build the three-story complex, two main floors and a basement level. The mall opened nearly two years later, on October 8, 1956, with 40,000 visitors in attendance. Original anchors included Donaldson's, Dayton's, Woolworth's, and a Red Owl grocery store. Other tenants included Bachman's, Fanny Farmer, J.B. Hudson Jewelers, and a Walgreen drug. The mall included services such as the Minneapolis Gas Company and a post office. Now you might be thinking that my list is rather short. I only included shops that have a recognition today. And since we are comparing 2021 to 1956, things have changed quite a bit as compared to say a 1970s mall. Southdale was so large by 1950s standards that the owners helped visitors by naming the hallways in the mall and zones in the parking lot. The hallway names were a mix of practical and local. For example, Dayton's Lane and Donaldson's Lane were located outside of their respective stores on the first floor. On the second floor, Edina Lane sat east of Dayton's and Maiden Lane sat north of Donaldson's. Maiden Lane led to a Walters Ladies Wear and Fashion Beauty Salon. Okay kids, remember we parked in the goose lot and entered through the Richfield Lane entrance. Malls went up all over the United States shortly after the opening of Southdale. The Twin Cities alone gained Apache Plaza in 1961 and Brookdale Center in 1962. In 1963, Southdale was already expanding. They added another floor to the Daytons, giving it a total of four. The Twin Cities' first twin theater, Cinema 1 and 2, opened on the Southdale property in 1966. It was twinned again to four screens in 1975. It was officially called Southdale 4, but it looked like Cinema 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 based on the signage. The last of the traditional malls built in the Twin Cities was Burnsville Center in 1977, at least until the Mall of America opened in 1992. Everything constructed since then has been <sighs> lifestyle centers. I shudder both sarcastically and truthfully as I write this part of my script after surviving a Thanksgiving day with temperatures in the teens. 
Open air malls. I hate them. Why would I want to drive 15 miles and then have to walk around in the cold? I'm not the only Minnesotan to feel this way. Lifestyle centers that once killed off malls are now dying themselves. When I started my channel, I had no intention of filming Albertville or West End, but they now have enough dead tenants to make fascinating videos. Southdale continued expanding in the 1970s. The owners opened a three-story gallery court wing with a J.C. Penney at the east end of the mall in March 1972. They also added a multi-level parking ramp. That same decade, Victor Gruen openly exclaimed that he was disgusted by the monsters he had created and disowned them. While he still loved the original design of Southdale Center, he hated that it mutated into a shopping-only destination with thousands of other malls built in the same fashion. Not long after Victor Gruen returned to Europe, another European visited the United States to check out its malls. Louis Mall wanted to make a documentary about shopping centers, but he could not get good footage with all the music playing in the background. He and his crew gave up and drove west to Glencoe, Minnesota, where they filmed God's Country. Check this out, historical photographs of the mall. There are several here and on the basement level. If you do want to see more, I recommend visiting the Mall Hall of Fame blog entry about Southdale. The author included several great historical photographs and wonderfully detailed information. I think rattling off every mall tenant during a video can be boring, so I just list tenants you may have heard of or are important to Minnesota retail history. The Mall Hall of Fame blog goes into all of that detail and also includes maps of how the mall has changed throughout the years. I highly recommend you check it out. If you like the movie, go read the book. Here is one tenant that Southdale was able to steal from the Fancy Pants Galleria. People's Organic moved across the street back in the summer of 2021. I love People's Organic, but I found their Galleria location to be rather small. Southdale gained its first local competitor in 1976 when a swank upscale mall, Galleria, opened directly south of the mall. I discussed that mall in more detail in my Galleria video. Moving on to the 1980s, potential trouble was brewing six miles east of Southdale Center. In 1982, the Minnesota Twins baseball team and Minnesota Vikings football team moved out of the Metropolitan Stadium, leaving an empty 78 acres of land in Bloomington. In 1986, the Bloomington Port Authority signed an agreement to develop the land into the Mall of America. Southdale management decided something had to be done to compete. A quick side note, Donaldson's became a Carson Perry Scott in 1988. In 1989, construction started to expand Southdale yet again. They built a new Dayton's directly north of the original location. During the construction, the Southdale Four Theater closed in 1990. Centennial Lakes, with eight screens, opened a mile south of the mall. The expansion opened in 1992, the same year that Mall of America opened. Along with the new Daytons, two more parking ramps were constructed directly north and west of the store. The original Daytons was sliced into smaller tenants with a large hallway stretching three stories tall a food court was built into the western part of the third floor. The original Dayton's basement still remains and leads into the new basement. The new Dayton's had seven internal mall entrances, two on each main floor and an escalator entrance down to the basement. This is the former Herbergers. I did not even notice this small anchor when I visited in late 2018. It's well hidden in the corner. I'm going to go on a tangent one thing Southdale management couldn't predict was that once Minnesotans visited the Mall of America, they were not keen to make it a weekly shopping destination. 
It was and still is too large to get in and out quickly, and it's always busy with tourists. Even as late as November 2021, I've heard people say, I haven't been to that mall in a decade, or oh, I had to go to the Mall of America today. <sighs> if Southdale management had kept the mall at its 1989 size, would it be doing better today? I have visited other malls such as Uptown Wilmer that are healthy in the middle, but dead in and around the anchors. If mall management didn't feel the need to grow and grow, would more malls be around? Those escalators ahead on the left once led to the third floor food court. Now Dave & Buster's has its own personal set. How swank. Getting back to Southdale history, in 1993, Marshalls moved into the portion of the basement not used by Dayton's. In 1995, Carson Perry Scott was rebranded to Mervyn's. The Southdale owners were right to worry about the future, but it wasn't the Mall of America. By the 21st century, several strip malls and large stores had opened around the mall, leading to a lot of competition. Dayton's was rebranded to Marshall Fields in 2001, and Southdale kept expanding. On November 9, 2001, Southdale opened a new movie theater at the southwest end of the mall where the Red Owl once stood, called Megastar Cinema's Southdale Center 16. Ooh, that's a mouthful. The rest of the expansion, opening throughout 2002, was external only tenants. P.F. Chang's, Cheesecake Factory, California Pizza Kitchen, and Maggiano's Little Italy. Southdale called this expansion District on France. The expansion was built towards France Avenue, which faces diagonally to York and 69. I will not make a joke. Southdale also branded the remaining third floor of the former Dayton's to a teen-centric shopping area called Trends on Top with trends being spelled with a Z because, hey, it's the 2000s. Tenants included Buckle, Front Row Sports, Gadzooks, PacSun, and Zumias. 2000s mall management was really into branding and districts. Let's take a break to ride the escalator and elevator in Macy's. I hope you remembered your backstage pass. In all seriousness, the backstage sign replaced the Lakeshore Grill sign. This and several other locations closed due to the pandemic. This entrance is now completely blocked by Dave & Buster's. One of the reasons I research my mall videos is to not look foolish. 
I assumed that this was the original Dayton's and was going to say, wow, look at this retro 1950s tile. This was built in the 1990s and isn't even unique to this store. I shared photographs of the tile with other Dead Mall fans and they sent me back similar shots from former Dayton's near their homes. I still think it's really cool, even if it's not unique. And here's the other closed entrance. To be honest, this store felt claustrophobic on the third floor and basement as they don't have windows or exits into the mall. In 2003, AMC acquired the movie theater from Megastar. AMC, which now owned Centennial Lakes, closed that theater two years later. In 2004, Mervyn's closed, leaving the anchor empty for several years. In 2005, Mills Corporation became owners of the mall. In 2006, Marshall Fields changed the Macy's we see today. The following year, in April 2007, Simon Property Group took over the mall upon acquiring Mills Corporation. This hallway led to the district on France. Mm, très chic. I did not get as many shots of the first floor court as I would have liked due to the number of vendors. I also have to confess that I filmed Southdale over a period of three days, so sometimes closed stores will magically open. I would rather be thorough even if it makes for goofy discrepancies. Moving to the 2010s, Herbergers moved into the former Carson Perry Scott anchor in 2011. Big changes occurred between 2011 and 2012 when management updated the design of the mall to what we see today. I was about to say that the changes are bland, but still better than that gaudy 90s decor. But that's me showing my age. I was a small child during the years of wooden paneling, so that type of mall gives me the most warm fuzzies. Along with the other 2010s updates, Management also added a children's play area on the first floor outside of the JCPenney and built a new food court on the second floor. These machines were just off because I visited on a Thursday evening. When I returned Sunday afternoon, they were running again. In 2013, Marshalls moved out of the basement. A couple of years later, Gordman moved into the location. That same year, 2015, Dave and Buster's moved into the old food court, blocking some of the windows and a Macy's entrance. Don't worry, there are still six remaining internal entrances to Macy's. Today, Dave and Buster's and a nonprofit performing arts venue are all that remain on the top floor of the mall. Both Gordman's and JCPenney closed in 2017. Herberger's closed the following year leaving Southdale with one anchor, Macy's. Around the same time, a Hennepin County Service Center opened on the first floor across from the old JCPenney. 60 years after Southdale's opening, Victor Gruen's vision was starting to come true. Soon after JCPenney left, a Lifetime Fitness Coming Soon sign was placed where the store once opened under the food court. Lifetime Fitness opened in 2020. I did a run and gun through its hallway as I did not want to film anyone swimming. I think it is odd that you can see people swimming from within the mall. I am curious to see how long it takes before the gym covers the windows to the pool. An announcement in 2020 
by the Hennepin County Library System stated that they would be moving the nearby Southdale Library into the mall. I was actually bummed by this as the Southdale Library is a 1970s beauty, but it may have made Victor Gruen happy. Unfortunately, the move has been put on hold. A librarian friend of mine told me that it actually has been canceled. If you ever make the Dead Mall pilgrimage to Southdale, I encourage you to take a quick walk around the Southdale Library. It's a time capsule, but a wonderfully clean and maintained trip back in time. Let's head back inside. I have nicknamed this place Cafe 80s. I have never eaten here. If you have, please leave a message in the comments. Since we have finished Southdale's history, I wanted to talk about the making of this video. I held off on filming Southdale for a number of reasons. First, I did not want to get kicked out for filming. Before the pandemic, Southdale was my exercise and movie mall. Was traffic bad due to winter car accidents or holiday shopping? I could sit on Highway 100 for an extra 30 minutes or walk through the mall. Did an accident prevent me from getting closer to home to see a special event movie? Yes, a couple of times. So I hit up the food court and then caught a movie at the AMC. Another reason for my reluctance to film was that I did not think that the mall was that bad. Some of the malls in my channel are downright depressing with less than 20% occupancy. It wasn't until I visited Rosedale in October 2021 that I realized what a healthy mall looks like. Rosedale is nice. It's updated, clean, full, and busy. Rather than sit around with an empty Herbergers, the owners were already demolishing it to make room for apartments, grocery, and hotel. Southdale didn't look as healthy with its nearly empty food court and empty storefronts. My third reason for not filming was that I was waiting for someone else to film Southdale. I was waiting for one of those creators with 20,000 plus subscribers and over 100 well-produced videos to make a fantastic 45 minute video themselves. Southdale is the original, let the experts film it. That same mentality was why I didn't start a mall channel until 2020. Why was I still thinking that after releasing over 30 videos myself? My original intention when creating this channel was to capture less popular malls that an outsider may skip due to distance. But why was I keeping myself away from the famous shopping centers? Someday one of those great video creators whom I admire will visit Southdale and they'll make a fantastic video. But it'll be Southdale in 2022, 2023, or later. And who knows? Maybe something big will close or change before the next explorer films Southdale. I am also thinking of the people who have been photographing Southdale off and on since the late 2000s. In their photographs, we can see the 1990s decor, 
we can see the original food court, the J.C. Penney, the Herbergers, the Marshalls and Goodmans, and so much more. I'm hoping someone in the year 2036 sees my work and says, ah, okay, okay, so that's what that looked like then, cool. I had those thoughts myself while looking at labelscar.com and Nathan Bush's photographs. I have a faded memory of a mall Arby's in my head that wasn't in one of my usual malls growing up. I kind of remembered being on this side of town, so I thought it was Southdale, and Nathan's photograph proved that it was true. I filmed Southdale right after Halloween, so we have a mix of Halloween and Christmas decorations. I lucked out with my timing as before the opening of Spirit Halloween, the stairs were blocked off. I had visited Southdale a few times when I was in the area in the late 2000s, so I was surprised the first time I found out that the Marshalls had left when I had started making monthly visits to the mall around 2018. 
Another reason I do research before opening my mouth, I was not aware that Gorbans had ever been in this location. Victor Gruen's dream didn't come to fruition in his lifetime, but it is coming to pass in the 21st century. Malls that were once entirely shopping destinations are diversifying to stay open. Southdale has a gym and a county service center. Five Lakes Center in Fairmont has a post office. Northbridge and Albert Lee has a medical center. And Faribault West Western Faribault has a school. I mention these malls because people still go there to hang out. These malls are important to their communities with pop-up markets, dance performances, talent shows, dinners, and much more. You can probably name a few malls of your own. I said in my Northbridge video that I loved it because of its aesthetics. I visited again in September 2021 on a dead mall road trip and was happy to see elderly people sitting in the mostly abandoned food court at 10 in the morning. While a twisted part of me loves gaudy design, empty tenants, and stained carpeting, I was truly warmed to see people using the mall as Victor Gruen intended for community. As we come to the end of the tour, 
I want to thank everyone who has watched my videos, and especially those of you who subscribe. I started this channel to film malls that had not been filmed. I didn't think many people would want to see Minnesota's tiny rural malls, but as of the release of this video, several hundred of you do. Whenever I find a new channel with hundreds of videos, I jump to the rural malls with wooden paneling. I'm telling you this because I will be going back to smaller malls. The big and healthy super regional malls will be around for quite some time. If anything happens to them, I will definitely head over. On that note, if I hear of any major changes to Southdale, I will make sure to capture them. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Southdale Center. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.